you know, we knew Terry McLaurin was going to be a thing, but Curtis Samuel came alive in week one. And my sleeper this week is Jahan Dotson. And I know there are folks, you know, the, the draft Knicks, the dynasty folks who were big on Jahan Dotson. And I think the rest of us sort of saw what was up this past week. I didn't get a, a ton of catches, but did make some nice plays, had a touchdown as well. And you looked at it. He was running, in terms of going downfield, about the same amount as Terry McLaurin. So now you've got two guys sort of on the outside that can kind of stretch the field for you. Carson Wentz, we know he's going to be inconsistent, but he does like to throw the ball downfield. So that is a good thing for Dotson. Uh, the Lions, you know, they were giving up some, some chunk plays last week as well. I know they gave up the big, long catch to A.J. Brown, who, look, I don't know if that's fair to compare because A.J. Brown is just a man. Uh, but I do think you're going to see Washington push the ball downfield. Uh, if Dotson is out there in your league and your waiver wire, go get him. Um, but I do think he has some sleeper appeal this week. I like him. I, I, I like all of the Washington pass catchers. And, and Dotson and Samuel were two of the players this week that I was like, if they're out there, they're worth more than a min bid. I didn't think many were. Also, that game is the rematch, I guess, or the revenge game of like the 2017 <laughs> Draft class. Oh, that's right. Golfers that's right. Uh, versus, Golf Wentz. versus Wentz. Oh, that's right. Uh, it's going to be a big, big couple of weeks for Wentz because, like, he's he's got the Lions. I think he's got the Eagles. He's going to have the Eagles a couple times yeah. uh, this year because that's uh, you know his old team, his original team that he'll try to get revenge on too. So, a lot going on for Carson Wentz. I have my Hines as a sleeper. He might just be a flex start depending on on what your roster looks like or how deep your league is. Coming into the year, Frank Reich you know, made a, a comment about how you know if I played fantasy football, I would really pay attention to Naheem Hines. And we all sort of perked up at that. And then I saw the results of week one. I'm like, oh, yeah, he wasn't lying. I mean, <laughs> Michael Pittman was far and away the number one target in the offense. No surprise there. But the next most efficient and productive pass catcher was Naheem Hines. Caught all six of his targets. Really was the closest thing they had to a wide receiver, too, because – they don't have anybody else that's going to catch the football there consistently. Alec Pierce now, uh, I think, is going to be out with a concussion because he took a really wicked shot during the game. Uh, there's just nobody else that you can really count on in that offense to catch the football. So we know that Jonathan Taylor is going to get the rushing work, and he'll get a few targets. But Naheem Hines, I mean, he might be the number two pass catcher in Indianapolis right now. I, I agree. And, and it's something that, that we were talking about coming into the year. Like, Matt Ryan just likes throwing to his running backs a lot. And, and both of them uh, saw over five targets in week one. So I, I think it is 100% uh, an instance where, like, just because Jonathan Taylor is Jonathan Taylor doesn't mean there's not enough for Naheem Hines to also be fantasy relevant. I think, I think that's going to be the case pretty much all year long. It's in the past we'd have the Naheem Hines game. This might be Naheem Hines' like season at this point, unless yeah. they find somebody else. <laughs> and I would still be starting Rashad Bateman. I know it's easy to look at what he did in Week One and be like, he had one good catch that saved his day. Well, it was a fifty-yard touchdown. Like that is what Rashad Bateman brings to the table. He is a deep ball threat. He could win in the red zone. But what I like is. He was the second most targeted player behind Mark Andrews. He led this receiving core in snaps and, and routes, and he is going to be their top receiver. And, and last week, it was against the Jets. The Ravens had a lead. Lamar only threw 30 times. This game could be closer against the Dolphins. Lamar might be showing out for a team that he potentially wants to play <laughs> on in the future. I, I expect more passing this week, and if that's the case, I expect even more Rashad Bateman production. We sort of talked about this, too, earlier in the week. This feels like an offense that might be able to support three pass catchers this year because I don't think Bateman gets the same kind of target share as Marquise Brown. Which means you've got Andrews, you've got Bateman, and you've got Devin DuVernay, who could end up being uh, fantasy relevant pretty much all year. 